Well, good morning, everybody. Glad you're with me for today's devotion. We are in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, wrapping up reading this book. So go ahead and open your Bible there if you haven't already. As you're doing that, I want to encourage you to be praying because Vacation Bible School is continuing each night this week. So you'll be praying for the teaching, for the kids, for for some of the children to become believers and followers of Christ, and for everything to go really well for these kids, just to have a big impact on their lives. Um, the thing I want to focus on in chapter six today is the importance of prayer in our spiritual well-being, our spiritual health as disciples of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice what he says in verses 18 and 19. Let's read that. He says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with praying at all times in view. He says, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And then he says, personally, pray on my behalf, on Paul's behalf as well, that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. So he's talking about praying for one another as believers, and then he asks them to pray for himself. And, and, he, and he states this in the context of chapter 6, where he describes, starting at verse 10 and following, uh, the reality that our living for Jesus means we are in a spiritual battle. We are in a spiritual war with an enemy who wants to defeat us, who wants you to stop following Jesus, stop growing in Jesus, stop believing in Jesus, who wants you to fall into sin and, and discredit the Christian faith and discredit your testimony, who wants you to do something sinful and ruin your family, ruin your life. We are in a spiritual war with a very real enemy. And in verse 11, he talks about that when he, when he talks about us being able to resist uh, uh, and stand and stand firm there in verse 13. But in verse 11, we need to do that because the devil is scheming to defeat us, the schemes of the devil there in verse 11. And in, and in verse 12, he talks about uh, the world forces of this darkness, that uh, there, there are, there's, an, there's, there's a, an army, a demonic army, that is behind the sinfulness and the darkness of this world, and that and they are our enemy. And then he talks about the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, in the, the realm that we do not see. Uh, there are spiritual forces at work to destroy the culture and to attack followers of Jesus Christ. So, he goes on to talk about the armor of God and part of, part, of, part of our protecting ourselves and standing firm, but not just protecting ourselves, but being on the offensive, okay? You don't win a war long-term just by playing defense. You also have to play offense. So how do we go on the offense? And he says prayer. Prayer is a big, big part of that, is a powerful weapon that is available to us, and not just praying for ourselves, but praying for other believers, other disciples, other followers of Christ. So look at verse 18 again. He says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, with that in view, with that mindset that you're to pray all the time in the spirit, he says, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. So what he's saying is that we need to be praying for one another and we need to do it in the Spirit. What does that mean? Well, you'll see someone, you'll hear about someone, you'll think about someone, and the Spirit will prompt you to pray for them. He'll, he'll bring people to your mind. He'll bring people across your your path, you'll encounter them, and you can pray for them. Uh, a lengthy prayer, a whispered prayer, Um and so because they says, be on the alert, always be looking, always be looking for opportunities to pray for other believers. How many times has someone told you about something and you said, well, you know, I'm going to be praying for you. Consider instead of doing that to say, can I, can I pray with you right now? And, and you stop there, stand together, maybe put your hand on their shoulder, whatever. And you, and for the next 60 seconds, you just pray with them, I've done that at the church in the hallways and stuff. I've done that in 
in uh, restaurants. I've done that in grocery stores. You meet someone and just take 60 seconds there and pray for that person. But, but it's not just praying for the things that we often pray about. You know, it is important that we pray when someone is sick, that we pray when someone has lost a loved one for their comfort, that we pray when someone needs a job, that we pray uh, uh, when, when someone's family is in crisis and on and on we go. It's, it's one of the beautiful things about being part of God's family is the way we pray for one another in all those circumstances and many more. <clears throat> but I think where we sometimes fall short and can do better is what he's talking about here because he's talking about praying for the saints in the midst of this teaching in chapter 6 about our spiritual battle. We need to spend more time, I believe, praying for one another's walk with Jesus, praying for people's spiritual faithfulness, their spiritual health, not just their physical health, but their spiritual well-being. And we need to be on the alert, looking for opportunities to do that. That is what he's talking about here. And I would encourage you, if, if you have a prayer list, for instance, that you include, include on that people who are, they're doing well, okay? Maybe it's family members, maybe it's leaders at the church. Pray for them to continue doing well spiritually, for them to keep growing in Jesus. You have children, grandchildren, friends, et cetera, co-workers who are followers of Christ. Pray for them to keep growing in Jesus and be strong. Don't, don't take it for granted that they always will be strong in Christ. So pray for their spiritual health and success and well-being. And then also pray that we will all be evangelistic. In verse 19, Paul follows all this up by saying, hey, would you all pray for me to have utterance that I might speak with boldness, the gospel, the word of Christ, the way I'm supposed to? So pray for yourself to have boldness. Pray for others to have boldness, to witness for Jesus, to invite people to church. Remember, we teach you here to pray three prayers every day. Number one, that God will give you opportunities to speak to someone opportunities to share the gospel, opportunities to share your testimony, opportunities to invite someone to church. That's the first prayer. God, today, give me opportunities. Then the second prayer, God, give me the vision to see those opportunities and the boldness to speak when they arrive. So every day, God, give me an opportunity to say something about you, and give me the courage and boldness to, to say it when, when the opportunity comes and, and to be able to see it and speak. And then thirdly, every day, pray for people by name. Pray for people by name who don't know Jesus, who are far from God, who are not following Christ. Three prayers we need to pray every day. That's part of being on the offense. Do not live the Christian life just playing defense. Live the Christian life playing offense by praying for other believers, for yourself, and for evangelism. It will help. It will make a difference. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for being with me. Re remember to pray for Vacation Bible School, for the students to learn about Jesus, and for some of these, these children to become followers of Jesus. And, and pray for the workers, the volunteers, to have energy and a good spirit as well. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow as we begin reading the book of Philippians. Philippians.